Welcome back friends. Uh, we will continue with our course on electronic packaging and manufacturing and uh, today we are going to discuss a very very important and critical concept which is known as flip chip technology. Okay. So, we will take off from our interconnections the first level packaging and today we will introduce you to or we will get introduced to flip chip technology okay. and then we will talk a little bit about first level interconnections. And this will continue to the next lecture as well, as well as the I think next as well as the following one. All right. So, if we go on, move on to the next slide, we will start with a definition of flip chip. Okay, and we'll spend a few a minutes over on this one, trying to understand what each of these terms mean. Okay, let us first talk about what is a flip chip. Okay, this is definition from PC Mag, and it says that a flip chip. It is a chip packaging technology or a technique in which the active area of the chip is flipped over okay, facing downwards. So, remember friends so far what we said was or what we had discussed so far is you have the piece of silicon and you have you know this connection points on the top surface and from where we were taking out these wire bonding or these wire bonds and these wire bonds were in turn connected to these leads or interconnects right now what we are saying is no instead of these connection points being on the top i'll flip the die over so the connection points now are at the bottom so that is flip chip technology okay so instead of facing up and bonded to the package leads with wires from the outside edges which we had seen before any surface area of the flip chip can be used for interconnection. Why? Because now you do not need to be constrained to the edges or close to the edges. Now, if I flip it over, then the entire bottom surface can be used to form bonds with the substrate, right. So, the entire surface is now available, okay. And typically, these connections are done by again, remember we talked about ball grid array which were solder balls in an array. So, now at the silicon level itself you can have these ball grid array connections between the chip and the chip carrier or the substrate. Okay. So, these solder bumps or solder balls are soldered onto the package substrate or can be the circuit when we talk about chip on board right when we are talking about package uh, packaging efficiency. We also talked about a fact also I talked about a scenario where the silicon instead of being mounted on a chip carrier can be directly bonded on the motherboard. So, it is a chip on board arrangement. So, that is also possible. So, this flip chip bonding can happen on the substrate or the chip carrier or on the motherboard directly. Okay. And under field with epoxy I will leave that term right now. So, this term we are not going to talk about at this point. So, under filled with epoxy, let it be there in the definition. We will not elaborate on it at this point. We are going to talk about it later. Why this under filling is required, why this epoxy is required, we will talk about that. Okay. The flip chip now allows for a large number of interconnections with shorter distances than wire, very obvious, and which greatly reduces inductance as well as impedance. Okay. So, once again let us read through this. A flip chip is a chip packaging technique in which the active area of the chip which is the place from where you can have these connection points. The active area of the chip is flipped over facing downward. Instead of facing up and bonded to the package leads with wires from the outside edges of the chip, any surface area of the flip chip can be used for interconnection which is typically done through metal bumps of solder, copper or nickel gold. Okay. Typically solder is most common. These bumps or balls are soldered onto the package substrate on the circuit board itself and underfilled with epoxy. Again underfilled with epoxy we are not discussing right now. The flip chip allows for a large number of interconnections with short distances and which leads to reduction in both inductance and impedance. Clear? So, let us look at some of these uh, a schematic right now and see what we are trying to say. 
Again, this is a schematic from PC Mag, and I think this picture is courtesy from Amcor. We talked about Amcor technologies before. See, a typical wire bond with ball grid array, right, is shown at the top. So the you can see the piece of silicon or the chip is this one. The active surface is at the top, and so you have wire bonding that comes and connects to the connection pads on the chip carrier and then you have solder balls if it is a BGA package. It can be pins also if it is a PGA package. It can be just pads if it is a land grid array or LGA package, but this is what it is. Inside the chip carrier, the silicon was facing up with the interconnection points at the top surface. In the second case what is happening is this piece of silicon is flipped so that these connection points now face downward okay. and then using the solder bumps or solder balls it is connected to the pads or the connection points on the substrate. Okay. So, you see the difference between these two this picture nicely illustrates that. You also see this epoxy which is, is denoted by this green uh, compound over here. We are going to talk about it later. Okay, why is this underfill epoxy underfill required? Okay, we are not talking about that right now except the fact that keep in mind that once it is flip chip bonded then you also have an epoxy that fills in the gap between these, uh, between these interconnection points. Why we will talk about that later. Questions? Okay. So, let us move on right now to the next slide So and, and talk a little bit about the introduction how it came into the into being. So, the first part is what we talked about just now again in bulletized form semiconductor chips are turned upside down and bonded directly onto the chip carrier or onto the motherboard. Okay. All right, but what another thing that I want to point out over here is yeah, there is more number of interconnection points because the entire surface area is available. The other thing is these all these connections can be made simultaneously. Okay. We will talk about this in more details when we talk about wire bonding as well as this flip chip bonding technology or how it is done, what is the, what are the fabrication techniques. But what I want to say is in wire bonding this each of these bonds have to happen one by one okay, sequentially. It can be automated, okay, but it still happens one after the other. Whereas in flip chip, what happens is when you turn it upside down and you flow it through a through an oven, all these connections happen play, happen simultaneously. Okay. And the other thing that is important, if we just go back to the previous slide, is now look at this. Even though I am showing that there is a molding compound and a cap, do I need that anymore? Do I need to protect it, protect the chip anymore? The answer is no, I do not. I mean not necessarily, maybe I will, I still will, but it is not necessary. And in fact, in many of these, you know, especially for, uh, I think right now, for most of these uh, computing packages, the microprocessors, they do not have this plastic molding cap. In fact, they are bare silicon. Because now what happens is the, the delicate connections are happening on the underside and then you have this epoxy so it is well protected. The top side is bare silicon no circuitry. Okay. So now the top side is available for heat dissipation. So now if you remove if you imagine that this molding cap or this black molding compound is not present you have this bare silicon. So, a lot of heat is going to be generated in the circuitry over here at the bottom surface. Silicon is a reasonably good conductor of heat, its thermal conductivity is around 120 watt per meter Kelvin. So, the heat can be conducted efficiently in the upward direction as I am showing through this cursor. And so, now this entire top surface of the silicon is available for heat dissipation. I can put a heat sink, I can put a cold plate whatever, whatever is the requirement. I can have a thermal solution directly bonded on the silicon or directly attached on the, to the silicon. 
Okay. So, that is where flip chip is an extremely I mean, it was revolutionary at the time it came out it was revolutionary. Now, I would say most of the except for very low performance packages most of the packages that you see are flip chip. Okay. So, flip chip was first introduced by IBM in 1962 IBM of course, I think I do not need to I think everybody everybody knows about IBM their track record their and, and, and their contribution. Okay. So, it was a path breaking technology invention at that point 1962 remember. Okay. Introduced for ceramic substrates at that point it was ceramic substrates for the high end packages where you know there was this drive or push towards having more number of interconnections etcetera it was introduced. Okay. That was the first instant in 1962. By the time we came to the early 70s, especially 1970, it became more mature, and at that point, they used to name it as the flip chip name came, I do not know when it came, but at that point, it was called C4, and the C4 was abbreviated, so 4 C is actually it's controlled collapse chip connection, that is what it was called controlled collapsed chip connection. Okay. So, initially when it came out it was initially used for peripheral packages. Okay. So, the flip chip the bonds were only at the outer edges okay, the four edges, but soon they figured out that you know why I do not need this area the central area to be vacant I can use it up. So, why not? If I have a flip chip, the entire area that I we were talking about before, the entire area is available. So, it quickly progressed to area arrays. All right. And also from the package point of view, if you were still using a dual inline package or a quad flat pack package, okay, these were first used over there. And later on, uh, when we talk about pin grid array or ball grid array, it quickly progress to those uh, packages as well. All right. So, today once again I am repeating that most of the computing microprocessors that we see whether it is a laptop, desktop, server they are all flip chip bonded. Okay. So, flip chip on the substrate. Okay. So, the next one actually is a sequence from Wikipedia. So, this is the underside of the sorry this is the piece of the, the chip or the microprocessor and these are all the connection points on top. Okay. So, next what we do we attach these solder bumps or solder balls on those packages or sorry on those on those connection points on the sub on the on the chip and that is shown by the second figure and the next is the flip chip these connections are on the top flip it. So, that these solder balls as you can see in the third picture they are all on the bottom surface they are all on this bottom surface. Okay. So, that is where the name flip chip comes into picture it is flipped over. Okay. Now, once we do that then what happens you have then this is the chip and this is the chip carrier or the substrate and the substrate will have corresponding pads okay, or the or the interconnection points. So, over there what happens is we have to perfectly align them. So, that they the pads and the solder bumps are directly completely aligned with each other. So, when we put the flip chip on the substrate they are perfectly in contact, okay. but now that is not enough. Now, the connection has to be made it is a solder ball and, and the solder pad yeah it is touching, but that is not enough. Okay. So, then what happens is there is some, some process some sort of energy you can think of it that you pass it through an oven or somewhere where what happens this solder will melt just a bit. So, that these connections are made. Okay. So, in such a scenario what happens is if I draw 
So, if this was my substrate sorry sorry my chip with the solder ball and then this would have been my motherboard and I am exaggerating. with corresponding pads. Now, what happens is when we bring them together on top of that, then what happens is then this solder over here, it will just melt and form the connection over here. So, therefore, now later once the connection is made, solder ball is no longer a sphere like this, this is before. what it becomes is now like this and then on the bottom we will have this connection agree. So, this is what it is. So, this is after let me write that down this is after. All right, so let us go back and this is what we were talking about. So, I will just leave it for, for a few minutes for a few seconds now for you to just look at this picture once more and make sure that you understand the process. Okay. So, why use flip chip? We already talked about some of those it is a small size. So, now you can have a large number of interconnections over, a, over because the entire area is available right now. right? So, if you have certain n number of interconnections provided that your IC technology allows you to do that, you can miniaturize it. Okay? That is one. So, reduced area, lesser height, lesser weight, agree? improved performance, high speed. Why? Because your electrical routing paths become so much shorter. So, lower impedance, lower inductance. Okay. Shortens the path by a factor of 25 to 100 depending on what, what was the size of your wire bond and what is the size of your flip chip solder connections. Great IO flexibility, interconnect flexibility because you have so much of area available for you, you know exactly because it is you no longer have to put the, uh, the connection points right at the periphery from where you could draw these wires. You can put it anywhere if you have an area you can put it anywhere. So, that gives you the flexibility and then you flip it over. Right? So, from the circuit point of view also it gives you a lot of flexibility to the VLSI designer it gives him a lot of flexibility in terms of placement of, of these features inside the silicon. Rugged with underfill the flip chips behave like small blocks of cured epoxy again we will come to this because this underfill as you can see even though we have not discussed so far it is so important we already have had three mentions of this. So, why is it so important we will talk about that when we discuss the bonding techniques in more details. Okay. And availability of materials, equipment, and services. Well, this is this has basically you know this is as of today because even if we talk, it was first invented in '62. Uh, it by the time it became very popular and mature, it was '70s. So we are still talking about a technology which is close to 50 years old, or rather more than 50 years old, half a century old. So today it is therefore it is expected that the technology has matured so far so much. Sorry that today there is an abundance uh, in terms of availability of materials, equipment and services. Okay. So, it is not a it is not a surprise anymore. Okay. And the other thing that I wanted to say is which is not mentioned in this slide is the availability of the top area. Okay. 
which is also called the back side of the silicon. Why back side? Because this is the front side where the circuitry and the connection points are. You flip it over, the back side now becomes exposed and this back side of the silicon is now available for placing my thermal solution, it is available for heat dissipation because I no longer need to protect it any further. Earlier I was using this chip carrier, I was using a ceramic lid or a plastic molded compound, molding compound in order to protect these connections. I no longer need to do that because it is on the underside and this underfill actually does that job. So, there is no need to protect this entire piece of silicon anymore. Right? So, that is also a very big advantage and we are going to talk about it in, in great details. We are going to look at different types of thermal solutions available etcetera when we go to the thermal management side which will be towards the second half of this course. Okay. All right. So, before we end this lecture, let us just get, get introduced to the different types of connections. We have talked about this is kind of a wrap up of what we have discussed over the last few lectures and also provides the lead into the next section where we are going to talk about these processes. Okay. So, so far when we talked about you know this chip, chip carrier all that stuff, the first level connections, we talked about wire bonding. right? We also talked about flip chip bonding and what we have not talked about so far is tape automated bonding. Now, how are this flip chip we know yeah they are solder balls, but how do you make them? How do you have these solder balls connected on the silicon or for a ball grid array how do you have these solder balls connected on the substrate? What is the process? We are going to study that. Wire bonding yes there are connection points on the periphery of the of the chip and there are connection points there are interconnection interconnect leads etc but how do you make these connections okay what is the process how do you even have these wire bonding how how do you you know make this wire bonding happen so we are going to talk about that what are the different processes of automated wire bonding okay and finally we are also going to talk about a technology known as tape automated bonding or TAB, T A B. Okay. All right. So, what is wire bonding? So, wire bonding is an electrical connection technique using a thin wire or a combination and, and a combination of heat pressure or ultrasonic energy. Okay. And it is a solid phase welding process where the two metallic materials which is the wire and the pad surface are brought in into intimate contact. And once the surfaces are in intimate contact, electron sharing or interdiffusion of atoms takes place resulting in the formation of wire bond. Okay. And then there are three different types of or processes of wire bonding in terms of what you talk about when we saw say the combination of heat pressure and ultrasonic energy, we are going to discuss those in more details in the next lecture and this table shows those. Okay. And in terms of how what is the process or method of having this wire bonding, there are two basic wire bonding methods which is called ball bonding and wedge bonding and these also we are going to talk about in details in the next lecture. All right. So, again just to summarize what we discussed today, today we discussed a very very important and critical and a ground breaking invention in the field of electronic packaging which is more than 50 years old right now. It is called flip chip technology. It is abundantly used in most of the uh, you know semiconductor chips that we have today and we spoke about what is flip chip technology, what are its advantages and how is it done. We did not get into the details of the fabrication techniques, but how it is done we discussed about that. right? And thereafter what we did was we went into the first level interconnections and we talked about 
wire bonding, flip chip bonding and tape automated bonding. We just mentioned about them okay? and we saw the definition of wire bonding. Okay? So, this will lead us to the next lecture where we are going to talk about what is wire bonding, what are the different methods and so on and so forth. Okay? So, with that we will end today's lecture and hopefully um, you enjoyed that and you learned something new. Actually again I want to reiterate again and again flip chip technology one of the most significant inventions in the history of electronic packaging. Thank you very much wire bonding in the next class.